Who's ready to make something other than placemats from a placemat panel? My name is Tara Reed. I'm an artist and a fabric designer with Riley Blake, and I'm now crowning myself queen of the placemat panels because I have made a lot of them. Today, I'm gonna to share how to make a super simple tote bag with two placemat panels, fabric fleece, and some straps. This is a great project for beginners and also to teach kids how to sew if you have some short ones around that have been eyeballing your sewing machine. So let's get started. Here's what we need to make our placemat bag. We need two placemat panels, two strips with the fabric three, and by three inches wide, a piece of lining fabric, and I'm gonna use make this out of one piece instead of cutting it into two. And we'll trim that in a few minutes. And then a piece of batting or fleece. And I'm going to use Pellon 987F, which is a one-sided fusible fleece that I'm going to fuse onto the lining and not the outside. First, let's talk about these panels. The first bag that I made right here, I used two panels that didn't have any text on them because it's a little bit more forgiving if you don't cut or sew exactly straight. But my panel has three images with words and three without, so we're gonna try it with words and see if it looks too crooked. We'll see. I'm going to use this one as my basis for all of my stitching to try and get it all lined up and gorgeous, and we'll see how that goes. The first step is to prepare your panels. So I got these straightened, ironed, and cut with a quarter inch all the way around the designs. Now I'm going to put them right sides together and make sure you're paying attention to your direction. So you want the bottoms to be matching not this way, or your bag is going to have one design upside down and who wants that? Double check that the tops are together, the bottoms are together, and then I'm going to pin and sew along the bottom. Now I'm gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam and I'm going to judge it based on this placemat, which has some definite lines to it. And then I'm gonna press the seam open and bring it back to the table. All right, I sewed the bottom together and I press the seam open. Now I had pre-cut the lining to about 19 inches wide, and I'm just gonna place this fabric on top, and I'm going to trim the lining to be exactly the size of the outside. As you trim this, you do wanna make sure you don't have more than a quarter inch, so just be double checking what you cut before, and if you need to cut a teeny bit of that red off so that it doesn't show through later, go for it. Whenever possible, I like to bend my mat around so I'm not moving my fabric as much. Now the outside of our bag is the same exact size as our lining. Now I'm gonna take a piece of fleece and I'm gonna make sure the adhesive side is up. I'm going to put the lining right side up so that the adhesive is going to be on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm gonna cut this to size and then I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I'm going to fuse the fleece onto the lining following the manufacturer's directions which come with your fusible fleece. Now that we have the fronts sewn together and the fleece fused to the lining, we are going to get these two halves ready to sew. So we're going to fold them right sides together. I'm gonna to pin these together and sew all the way down both sides of the outer fabric. And then for the lining, we're gonna fold that in half and then just double check that you folded it the correct direction. Make sure it's the same size as your outside. Yep, check, check. And on this one, we're going to sew all the way down one side, but on the other side, we're gonna leave an opening to turn. And if you wanna put a tag in, you wanna put that in now and about an inch down from the top so it doesn't get caught when you're sewing the top part. And then make sure the raw edges of your tag match up with the raw edges of your fabric. And then just so I don't get on a roll and forget to leave that opening, I'm gonna double pin. So I know that I wanna leave this space opening this space open for turning later. If I forget, not a big deal, you can use a seam ripper and open a hole so that you'll be able to flip this. So let's go back to the sewing machine. And because I'm using one of the placemats that has a lot of straight lines, I'm gonna have that side up to make sure that when I'm sewing, I'm going along one of, the, one of these lines because if I go from the other side, I might be more likely to be crooked and the other side isn't going to be very noticeable if it's not perfect. 
When you get to the end, because we had these pressed open and we want them to stay pressed open, fold them so that they're open when you stitch over them and not like one hanging down. Now on the lining side, you wanna do a slightly larger seam allowance because it's gonna be inside the outer bags. And then remember on one of the lining sides, we need to leave a few inches open for turning. So I'm gonna do that over here. I do like to go back and forth a few times on the sides of a opening area, just so it reinforces the stitching and they won't rip as you're turning your bag right side out. And we're gonna to go to the ironing board and press these seams open on both the lining and the front. Now we're going to prepare the straps. You have two pieces with the fabric with the selvages cut off three inches wide. And we're gonna start by ironing it in half all the way down. So do you like to use steam with your iron or do you like to use a dry iron and spray water on? Leave a comment and let me know which you prefer and why. Now we're going to open the fabric and we're going to iron each side where the raw edge meets the fold in the center. And it's much easier to just do one side at a time and make sure you don't iron across that fold because you don't want to unfold it. Once you have that all folded in, then you're going to go back and you're going to fold it and press it in half one last time. And if you want a wider strap than this, you're just going to cut an, your original fabric a little bit wider. Now we have the lining and the outside sewn together, seams pressed open, and two handles. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the lining and we're going to turn it right side out. All right, so I'm lining this up along one of the lines of my grid and we're going to clip the handles on each side. So you're going to do raw edges to raw edges, four inches from the side. So one, two, three, four, we're gonna clip it right here. And then one thing to make sure is that when you bring your handle around, you don't want it to twist because if you sew it twisted, it will forever be twisted. So you don't want it to like be like that. This is how I like to make sure I run my hand along here and make sure we put this side down. One, two, three, four. So we're gonna clip this one right here. I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing on the other side, making sure that I line the handles up. So it will be basically four inches, but not only counting four, but I basically double check that this is the same spot on each side. Check that side and clip. Now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew over each of these at about a quarter inch. And I'm going to actually sew it, not baste it back and forth twice, just to reinforce those handles a little bit. We're so close. Now we have the handles sewn onto the lining and we are going to put the lining inside the outer images, right side to right side. So we're gonna keep this inside out, that in, and you're going to match the corners. I like to start by clipping the seams. So I'm lining up the two seams there on the side and clipping that. I'm gonna do that on both sides and then we're gonna deal with the handles. All right, so you don't want the handles out here. You want the handles in here. But we also need to make sure that they are flat at the very top where we're going to be sewing this together with a half inch seam. And I like to do a half inch out here just to make sure everything gets put together nicely. So I, I flatten that out line up the, where the handles are and clip that, and then also clip the middle. You wanna make sure you have enough clips to get these top raw edges lined up because it will be a little bit bulky with all this handle in here. So this part's not gonna be flat. This is the part we need to pay attention to because that is the area that we will be sewing. So that's pinned together nicely. We're gonna take it to the sewing machine, sew all the way around with a half inch seam allowance. You're going to double back again where you see the stitching for the handles, just to reinforce it again. Not that we're gonna be carrying bricks in this bag, but you don't want your handles to fall out. So you're just gonna turn this right side out. And what I like to do when I'm turning right side out to put less strain on the, the tips is turn flip that right away so it's not straining the stitching as much and it's just going through the folded down fabric so see like that instead of leaving it like that to pull as much 
Now you have two choices. If you don't want anyone to know where you turned it, you can take this and hand stitch this closed. I, however, don't feel a lot of people are going to be inspecting the inside of my tote bag. So I am going to just do this and I'm gonna sew along there. It won't look as perfect, but it will be done a lot faster. Then the big question is, did I get both sides all the way down? Yes, I did. So that's awesome. What we're gonna do now, we're almost done. If there's any threads hanging out in between, you can just see if they pull out gently or snip them. Now we're just going to shove the inside, the lining into the bag and I'm going to press around the top edge. I don't want the lining showing like that. I'm gonna make sure that it's pressed really well. So all I'm seeing is the placemat and then I'm gonna come back and we're going to stitch a border and we're gonna be done. When you top stitch about a quarter inch from the edge, you wanna make sure that your straps are away from the bag. So on the opposite side, because you don't wanna have them caught down here and then they're hanging in the wrong direction. So just pay attention to that as you put this onto your sewing machine. That's it, it is done. Look at that. Remember when we were looking at the first one, I had done it with two that didn't have any specific straight lines. So I was a little bit nervous about the one we just made, but it turned out marvelously. So I think the trick is make sure you cut it really well. And when you're sewing, pay attention to this side the most. One other thing is if you didn't feel like having the designs out, these would be reversible. So you could always turn it the other way and just have a leaf print bag as well or whatever fabrics you choose to do. And if you do think you're going to do it reversible, you might wanna take the time to hand sew that, but it's really not very noticeable. Super simple, fun bags, great way to teach someone to sew, great way to just whip up something and another way to use placemat panels for something other than your table. I would love to hear what your plans are, if you're going to make this, who you're gonna make them for, all the details, drop them in the comments.